Please, mate. I've, I've, yeah, I've, You're sick, mate. I've, I've got to get out of the train, mate. I'm really sorry. Hey, can I get a quick picture, mate? Nah, mate. I've got to go, mate. Just a little cheeky little picture, buddy. I've really got to go, mate. I'm sorry. Welcome to my Royal Court family. Today, we will be reviewing Ren's debut rap album, Sick Boy, track number five, Lost All Faith. Let's do this. Only joking, I'm an introvert, alone inside my room because my insides hurt. I contemplate existence with consistence in my polo shirt, then reassert my confidence with compliments I don't deserve. I calm my nerves by plotting for the day that I might leave this earth. What's up, everybody? My name is King Freddy, and I'm ready to bust up in this uh, like confetti. Today, we're going to continue on this Ren review train, reviewing his debut rap album, Sick Boy, track number five, Lost All Faith. But before we get started, if you have not yet joined my Royal Core family, you can do that right now by hitting the subscribe button down below, ringing that notification bell so you can receive all the notifications for all of my videos delivered directly to you. Ren, step up to the plate. Let's do this. All right, so just to let you know, we do have the lyrics pulled up. I will have the lyrics pulled up for every song I review off this album, just so that we can go through it and break it down for you guys. Um, the whole purpose of this is to review the song more so than just the reaction because the majority of the album I've already reacted to because he's released these tracks independently um, throughout the year with videos attached to them. Um, I've either already reacted to them or I have seen them. So having said that, we're going to get into Lost All Faith. So let's do this. This motherfucker said, You're sick guy, mate. <laughs> you sick guy, mate. You sick guy, fam. <laughs> You're a sick guy, fam. <laughs> like, if any motherfucker ever came up to me, I don't care if I call myself sick boy on a regular damn basis. If anybody ever came up to me and said, You a sick guy, fam. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, because you're in my fucking face, bro. <laughs> All right, let's restart this bitch. I just find it funny that the motherfucker decided to come up to him and said, you're a sick guy, fam. Mate, I'm in a bit of a rush right now. You're a sick guy, fam. Oh, thanks, mate. I've, I've, yeah, I've, you're a sick boy. I've, I've, I've got to get out of the train, mate. I'm really sorry. Yeah, I'm talking to you, like, hey, can I get a quick picture, mate? Oh, nah, mate, I've got to go, oh, mate. Like, just a little cheeky little picture, but it's really got Nah, motherfucker, he said no, bitch. Keep it moving. Keep it pushing. Oh, man, I'm sorry, man. Nah, 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 nah. Come on, come on, come on. 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 I'm a charming fella. I like, which well, he is, by the way. <laughs> Ain't no doubt that Ren is a charming fella. I like drinking cans of Stella. <laughs> Stella, give this motherfucker a, a sponsorship. You got me? <laughs> Ren likes to drink your shit. Give him a sponsorship. See, I'm living for the weekend. Bad kebabs and salmonella. That is fucked up, bro. I love kebabs. Don't ruin my love for kebabs by put by having it be bad and g giving me salmonella. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'd, I'd be devastated. <laughs> Cinderella story. Rags to riches. Spin it. Full propeller. Dude, 
you have to understand that in the normal context of what the Cinderella story is, yeah, it, it doesn't make sense, right? But he is a, a rags to riches story. You know what I'm saying? Rent came from nothing. Not only on top of that, not only was he did he come from nothing, did he not have, you know, he didn't come from a family of, of, with wealth and money. You know what I'm saying? Not only that, but he spent a majority of his life sick as shit, trapped in his fucking bed, wondering if he'd ever even see this day, live to see this day, or if he would just die in that bed alone. You know what I'm saying? Unbeknownst to anybody in the universe, you know? And so it's it's definitely a rags to riches story. And it's kind of like a Cinderella story because, you know, if you've seen one of his... Um, like videos in his room, just like dude, just going through it and frustrated as hell and crying. You know what I'm saying? And, and to see him now, like even just on his uh, live streams or his interviews or even Money Game Part Three. You know what I'm saying? Just to see how far he's come, it's like, oh my god, dude! It, you a lot of times you can't even believe it's the same fucking person, bro. So yeah, Ren, I'm 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 very proud of you. And I'm very happy for you. No doubt. Then he goes on to say, I'm Nigella Lawson stacking mozzarella. And I believe she's like a chef or something. But that's like a, a pun on the word, word mozzarella. Like cheddar. Like cheese. Like money. You know what I'm saying? Like he like Nigella Lawson. He just stacking that cheddar. And you know what? Good for him. Because he fucking deserves it. Let's keep rolling. Rolling. <laughs> this motherfucker said rolling. What am I, a fucking real king? <laughs> I'm a charming fella, I like drinking cans of Stella. See, I'm living for the weekend, back up up to Salmonella. Cinderella story, racks to riches, minute full propeller. I'm Nigella Lawson, stacking mozzarella. Only joking, I'm an introvert. Alone inside my room because my insides hurt. I contemplate existence with consistence in my polo shirt. Then reassert my confidence with compliments I don't deserve. I calm my nerves by plotting for the day that I might leave this earth. Alright, so... He goes from boasting about his recent success and all the cheddar he's stacking, you know what I'm saying? And he just immediately dives deep into the darkness, you know what I'm saying? Because he's like, it, actually, in reality, y'all might think that this is this is what you see in public, but in reality, I'm really an introvert. I really like to be alone, which facts, I like, I'm an introvert too, so I feel you, Red. You know what I'm saying? I'm used to being inside my room. This is him in his lyrics. I'm used to being inside my room just from being sick. You know what I'm saying? Just from being trapped in there all those years from being forced to be trapped in there. Now it's so comfortable to me that it, it comes natural even if I don't necessarily need to be stuck in there anymore. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, he's still suffering from his... Illnesses, not to the same degree. So yeah, a lot of times he's stuck in there because his insides hurt, you know? But that could mean other things. Like, is his insides really hurting? Is it anxiety? Is it just, you know, emotional trauma? You know? Is it just because your body is comfortable feeling that way? So it expects to feel that way? So, so your brain makes you feel that way because that's all it knows? You know what I mean? And so then he proceeds on saying, I contemplate existence with consistence in my polo shirt. <laughs> like this dude's just sitting, you know, on the floor in a corner, legs crossed in a fucking polo shirt, just thinking about his existence consistently, you know, just pondering, you know, his state of, of existence, you know. Then reassert my confidence with compliments I don't deserve. Hold on. That's what our fucking anxiety brains like to do to us, right? So he takes the compliments that he's getting from all of his fans that he's been getting all year long, and he uses that to reassert his confidence. But then at the same time, he's saying that he doesn't deserve those compliments, right? To be fact, it's not him that's saying he doesn't deserve those compliments. Like most people that would hear this or read this would say, how could you think that you don't deserve your confidence? It's not. There's two different Rens. There's Ren, the normal 
sane, you know, rational Ren. And there's the irrational Ren. The irrational Ren is the anxiety brain. That motherfucker is a trip. Just like any irrational version of anybody. You know what I'm saying? That motherfucker is the one that's saying, you really don't deserve these compliments. Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are these people to think that they can even say this shit to you? You know what I'm saying? You're just a piece of shit. You know? You, you, your shit ain't. It's like the higher end thing. It's exactly that voice, right? So, it's trippy. Because a lot of people will hear that and like they'll feel bad and they'd say, oh, you shouldn't feel that way. It's not him. It's his irrational side. It's his anxiety brain. You know what I'm saying? Because if it was him, he wouldn't take those compliments and reassert his confidence with them. You know what I'm saying? If he truly felt that way, how could you use that to, re to boost up your confidence if you truly feel that way? So it's not him. You know what I'm saying? Then he says, I calm my nerves by plotting for the day that I might leave this earth. That's dark as shit. Because when he's saying, I calm my nerves, again, that's anxiety. That is pure anxiety. I know it. I have an irrational Freddy that's living in my fucking body and household. Uninvited. You know what I'm saying? I have the same anxiety brain. So I know that. So he's saying he calms his nerves, though, by plotting for the day that he might leave this earth. That's dark. You know what I'm saying? If the only way to calm that anxiety brain is by perpetually, you know, plotting on the day that you leave this earth, you know what I'm saying? Just like at least one day I'm going to die. So and then that calms yourself, you know, that that calms your nerves. That's dark. Now, granted, what I definitely think is... um. I know he's been through therapy before, like um, talk therapy, you know, or CBT therapy. I know he's been through that before. Um, I think he was he went through it prematurely because of the fact that um, that wasn't helping the actual. It's like the hierarchy of needs, right? His need, his most important need at that time was to resolve. The pain, the physical pain that he was going through. And talk therapy, CBT therapy was not going to do that. It wasn't going to fix the symptoms of Lyme disease, right? So I think he might even have a bad taste in his mouth for therapy because of that, right? Because of the years that he was going through it, but not getting anything out of it and getting worse, okay? But what I do think is that now that he's physically getting better, now that his the pain has been reduced to a, a you know dramatic extent, obviously, right? I think now is a time where he probably does need to seek a good therapist. You know what I'm saying? Because the level of trauma he went through for the last 13 or so years is huge. You know what I'm saying? It fucks with anybody. He doesn't need to be put on any fucking mental medications. You know what I'm saying? Or anything like that. He just needs talk therapy, right? He just needs to get through. He needs to work out a way to deal with his anxiety brain, his irrational side, outside of plotting on the day that he leaves this earth, right? He needs to find a more productive way of dealing with that instead of just shutting it off and not dealing with it, you know, um, because that's just temporary, you know? Because when that motherfucker is in the in the closet, when you push your anxiety self into the closet and you close a door on that motherfucker, he's not getting weaker. He's not getting smaller. He's not going away. He's not dying. You know what I'm saying? He's actually getting stronger and he's building strength. And one day he's either going to bust out of that fucking closet or when you accidentally open the door on it, that's it. You know what I'm saying? It's an explosion of anxiety. And so, and it's going to be very overwhelming. So yeah, so I think, honestly, if he sees this, he needs to find a good therapist that he trusts. And no medications, just CBT, right? Just behavioral changes, right? Learning how to reframe things in his mind, right? Um, and this should be outside of the 
treatments he's getting for Lyme disease because that's not going, the two don't mix, right? The two, eight, therapy is not going to help his Lyme disease symptoms, right? Um, that's the problem that he had, that he's faced all these years because on top of the stupid ass medications that, you know, that gave him that wasn't even meant to, does, to treat Lyme disease, they did this bullshit therapy with him that wasn't even meant to treat Lyme disease either, right? So, yeah. All right. That was a big spiel, but um, that part of his song was huge, right? I mean, it's one of the centerpieces in the core of this entire, the theme of this entire song. All right, let's continue. Room because my insides hurt I contemplate existence with consistence in my polo shirt Then reassert my confidence with compliments I don't deserve I calm my nerves by plotting the day that I might leave this earth I lift up my eyes to the hills Pain is my shepherd, my sword and my shield I find my refuge in patience and pills A patient that's patiently waiting for help I don't ever seem to feel well Can anybody this. save me from myself? This There's blood on my leaves where I fell Dude, between the bridge, the pre-chorus, and the fucking chorus is fucking crazy. It's just ah, chef's kiss. But let's dive into the substance of it. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Pain is my shepherd, my sword, and my shield. That's, that's fucking incredible because he's basically saying pain is the only thing he's ever known for the longest, right? Anything that he's known pre-pain doesn't really matter at this point because it's so insignificant to the amount of suffering he had suffered during the time that he knew pain. So he uses pain as his shepherd, right? And what is, what does it mean to have like my shepherd, right? <sighs> Sometimes genius lyrics don't let you click on shit. Shepherd. It's a biblical reference, obviously, but I want to get the right thing for it. Okay, so my shepherd. So someone that looks after sheep, I, I, I know that, but it's it's basically a biblical term too. Um, so basically, what he's saying that pain is. Something that looks after him. It's his guide. It's his protector. And it's his sword, which is his defense. And it's my shield, which again, his protector. So it ties basically, basically he's saying pain is everything to me. Pain is my friend, my enemy, my protector, my shield, and my sword. My, my defense, right? What I use to defend, you know, against everything, right? I find refuge in patience and pills. So basically, he's had to be patient this entire time. I mean, he's dealt with this situation, right? This um, undiagnosed Lyme disease for several years and his suffering for several years. So patience, he's learned over time that he just needs to sit there and be patient, be patient, be patient, be patient, and wait, and wait, and wait. And pills. I mean... It, He's even shown how many pills he has to take on a daily basis. And it's a lot, right? So that's his refuge, right? His refuge is literally, you know, in the fact that he, he has extreme, he has built up extreme patient skills, right? Patience skills. And the fact that he has to take all these pills that he knows it sucks that he has to take them, but he knows it's going to make him better. It's going to make him better. It's going to eventually better and better. And he's going to be able to do the things that he really wants to do. Right? 
And then he goes on to say, a patient that's patiently waiting for help. And he has been patiently waiting for help. Right? At times he's gotten frustrated with the system, but he has been patiently waiting for help. Right? I don't ever seem to feel well. Facts. Can anybody save me from myself? Honestly, when someone says, can, when, when anybody says, can somebody save me from myself? What that means is, can somebody save me from my irrational side, from my anxiety side, my anxiety brain, that little motherfucker in the back of my head that keeps talking shit to me on a daily fucking basis and keeps flipping the fuck out like the world is fucking ending all around us, right? There's blood on the leaves where I fell. There's been times where he couldn't even like maintain his his balance, his physical stability. He, you know, he would collapse on the floor and just lay there for hours, like not able to get up. You know what I'm saying? There's blood under these rifles. So yeah, coming down. So that's what that means. Burn the border, sons and daughters. Basically, this is where, he, where, so let's, let's re read it. Burn the border, sons and daughters, law and order crave disorder. The theme of this part is like, you know what? I just want total anarchy at this point, right? I'm so frustrated with everything that, and I've lost a lot of faith in the process that in this time of his life, right? Which isn't the present, but in this time of his life, you know, basically he wanted anarchy. He just wanted to burn the whole thing down, right? Praise my selfish ways. I've come too late. I've lost my faith. I've lost my faith. So, honestly, when he says praise my selfish ways, when he says his selfish ways, what I think that means is the fact that what he wants is to, at that time, what he wanted in that time period of his life was to pursue his passion, was to pursue his music, was to do things that he, to follow his dreams, right? And was to live a normal life, right? was to be able to do the normal things that his friends are out there doing, right? That's not really selfish, you know? In a sense, because there's a lot of people that are also more, you know, potentially or sicker than um, Ren at the time, or that they were, you know, crippled or something. But honestly, it's not selfish. But we think it is. Our anxiety brain tells us your, you know, your God complex is coming out. Like in high rent, you know what I'm saying? You're being selfish. You're being selfish. You know how many people out there that, you know, don't even have half the shit you have right now? You know what I'm saying? You know how many people out there that don't have clean water or food, you know? And so it's like, that's what you start thinking. You start minimizing your own feelings, you know, and unjustifying them, you know, for the purpose of just further fucking with yourself, you know? So, yeah. That was huge because it's a bridge, pre-chorus, and chorus. But that's the biggest theme of the song, you know, aside from the first verse. And, again, this is not in the, mo in the present moment. He's not discussing how he feels in the present moment, this song is talking about, which he probably wrote this a long time ago. This song is discussing his feelings in that time period, during that time period. It would help if I actually clicked the right fucking thing. But you know. Oi, you've awoken a beast. I'm a geezer on the streets. Now, I learned this from the video reaction of this song. Um, apparently, geezer just means the word man. There's another word for man in the UK, <laughs> which in the US is like an old person, right? Uh, an old man, but um, in the UK, it just means man. So, okay, cool. So basically, he's a man on the streets. Um, you've awoken a beast. I'm a man on the streets. 
Mona Lisa, this is art, which he's basically talking about his music. Make her moan at least. So he's saying if if they're not gonna like the music, I'm at least gonna make them moan for me. <laughs> Mama, she needs my meat. <laughs> okay. This part right here though, Eeny Meeny Muhammad I be Ali. He has mentioned Muhammad Ali a few times throughout the songs that he's released this year. And a lot of these songs are on the album, right? I think Muhammad Ali is his mentor, is one of his mentors. is one of his, not mentors, but somebody that he looks up to, right? Some, a hero, you know what I'm saying? Um, pleased to meet you, mate, who's the G? You know, that's basically saying, hey, I'm pleased to meet you, Ran, who's the G? Come on, G. And this is the part where he's about to come in and say, hey, I'm not, I'm not no fucking G, man. You know, I'm just, I'm just good old rap. These are on the streets, Mona Lisa, this is art. Make her Mona Lisa, she needs mommy. Eeny, meeny, miny, Mohammed Abi Ali. Please to meet you, mate, who's the G? Not me, I'm a regular guy. Halitosis with psychosis, omens etched in my mind. Overdose on pills and potions, a collection of mine. Spit a volume with a zani and I mix it with wine. So this part right here, not me. Man, I'm not no fucking G. I'm nothing special. I'm just a regular guy. Not a regular. You would think and expect him to say, I'm just a regular guy. But no, an irregular guy. It means I'm not anything special. I'm not even regular. I'm sub-regular, right? Like, you think I'm here. I'm not even here. Motherfucker, I'm here, right? This is... His anxiety brain, his depression side talking to him, right? Or dis or talking, right? And then he says, halitosis with psychosis. I don't know if halitosis is like a symptom of um, mental health, poor mental health, or if it's a symptom of Lyme disease, but it sounds pretty fucked up to say halitosis with psychosis. And he's had psychosis before because of the fucking stupid medication that they put him on that had nothing to do with treating Lyme disease, right? Omens etched in my mind, which is really fucked up. Overdosed on pills and potions, a collection of mine. <laughs> but it's just like, I've taken so much fucking, you know, medications, bro, and I've collected a whole litany of them over the years because they were prescribed to me. You know what I'm saying? That's basically what he's saying. Then he goes on saying... Split a Valium with a Zanny, and I mix it with wine. That's not a very good concoction, brother. <laughs> it's not a good concoction for anybody. But, yeah. People will cope in however way they they feel like they, they need to cope, right? It's a coping mechanism. It's a very bad one. But you can't judge other people's coping mechanisms on one hand because it's like, you're not in their shoes. You're not feeling the, th the shit that they feel on a daily basis, right? But on the other hand, you know that that's not a correct way to cope. So it's like, and nor is it a healthy way to cope, but it's like a fine line. You know what I'm saying? Me, an irregular guy. Halitosis with psychosis, omens etched in my mind. Overdose on pills and potions, a collection of mine. Split a volume with a zani and I mix it with wine. Oi, pull yourself together, mate. Pull yourself up, stand up straight. Look at you, you're such a mug. God, you're such a fucking stain. Honestly, I wouldn't be seen that with you in public. Depressed and disorderly, it's like you fucking love it. Mug. This is like in high end, right? So... The anxiety brain was saying, hey, not me. I'm not a, I'm not anything special. I'm an irregular guy. Blah, blah, blah. And then now the rational Ren, right, is basically saying, hey, come on now. Pull yourself together, man. Pull your socks up. Stand up straight. What the fuck is wrong with you? You're, you're being a little bitch right now. You know what I'm saying? God, you're such a fucking state. Whatever that means. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't even be seen... Dead with you in public. What the fuck is wrong with you? You're always depressed and disordery. It's like you fucking love to be in this state of mind. And that's his rational side arguing with the irrational side. And the irrational side is about to come in with a response. 
This is when it, the irrational side comes in and says, hey, maybe you're right. Maybe being depressed and disorderly is the same thing as just being Ren. Maybe that's, that is Ren. Maybe that is me. Maybe I'm just depressed and disorderly. That's my natural state. That's just my personality. There's nothing I can do to change that. Right? And then he says, um, yeah, so maybe you're right. Maybe it's Ren. I, and I'm going to do it again and again because that's just, I can't do anything to change it. It's just how it is. It is what it is. Right? Maybe I'm high. Maybe I'm meant to live in a cycle of anti-survival. That's fucking crazy. So basically saying, maybe I am high right now. Maybe I'm just tripping. But on the other hand, maybe this is just meant to be my life. That this is my lot in life. That I'm just meant to suffer. Right? To live on the fine line and edge between survival and death. You know what I'm saying? And maybe that's just how it is, how it's meant to be. And he's like, amen. <laughs> In a prism, light bends, shut the iris off the lens. So basically, he's he's basically saying, In a prism, an actual prism, that when light enters it, it bends and then it shuts the iris off the lens. Right? So to where once the light bends, you can't see the light anymore. It's gone. It's off. Right? So he's basically saying that, hey, even in something like that, there are moments in time when the light just doesn't, it just shuts off. It, you can't see the light anymore, right? So maybe that's just, maybe I'm in that prism right now. Maybe I'm at a point where there is no light on the other end. There is no hope, right? There's no hope or light at, on the, at the end of the tunnel. Make believe and play pretend, <laughs> which is a fucking amazing way of saying that. Because make believe and play pretend is the same fucking thing, right? It's just the opposite. It's just another way of saying each other, right? God's my witness at the end, which is true. God is everyone's witness at the end. So, yeah, we're about to hit the net, the bridge now. Um, and then the pre-chorus and chorus. Let's do it. Again and again, maybe I'm high, maybe I'm meant to live in a cycle of anti survival like man. In a prism like Ben, shot the iris of the land, make believe and play pretend. God's my witness at the end. With God as my, my witness, witness, I walk through the valley of the, the shadow, shadow of sickness. sickness. I fear no evil, I need, I need no, no forgiveness. forgiveness. Deliver me from temptation, he never listens. Alright, so the pre chorus and the chorus, we've already went through it. So let's go through the bridge first, and then we'll hear the, the pre chorus and chorus again. So, with God as my witness, I walk through the valley of the shadow of sickness. This is actually another biblical thing, right? Um, it's normally stated as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, right? But he's twisted it as I'm not walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of sickness. I'm just in a constant state of sickness, right? It's like I... It's at times where it's like it gets so bad that you just wish that God would just take you out of the world, right? Just just end your suffering. But that never seems to happen, you know, because you go from it really, 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 really sucks to, okay, it's not that that bad. You know, I'm having a moment of a little bit of. Relief, I can breathe just a little bit better now. And then you're back into the, oh, no, it's, I'm going back down into that, to that really, 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 really sucky state. You know what I'm saying? And so it's a constant loop, right? In and out, up and down, right? And so it's like, that's happened to him so many times that he doesn't even think that 
that he just thinks that God is, you know, the universe is playing tricks on him. Like that, like he's just meant to suffer. Like this is his state of hell, right? And so that's what he means by a walk through the valley of the shadow of sickness, in my opinion. Obviously, all of this is in my opinion. I fear no evil and I need no forgiveness. So basically, at this point, there's nothing for me to fear. I've, wi I've gone through all of the horrors anybody could possibly fucking imagine, right? So I fear nothing further than this, you know? There's nothing more that can happen to me that could be worse than what I've already experienced. And I need no forgiveness. I don't need to justify why I feel the way I feel to anybody. That's basically his irrational side talking, right? His anxiety side talking. I don't need to justify why I feel this way. So, deliver me from temptation. He never listens. It's hard to kind of understand what he means by deliver me from temptation. Like, what's he mean by temptation? What's his definition of temptation in that moment of time, right? Is he contemplating, un was he contemplating at the time, unaliving himself? Because I know that he's had those thoughts before. Um, and the fact that his friend Joe unalived himself, you know what I'm saying? So is that what he means, he means by temptation? Um, and yet, he never listens. So basically, he's still talking about God because he started it off with, with God as my witness, right? With God as my witness, he sees me. He's witnessing me walk through the valley of the shadow of sickness. And he's witnessing me, not fearing any evil, witnessing me the fact that I don't need any forgiveness. And I ask him throughout all this time, I beg of him to deliver me from temptation, but he never listens. And I think, again, by temptation, he means the temptation of unaliving himself. Yeah, this song is deep. It's, you know, when you first hear this song, when it came out on the, as a video, as a drop, you're excited and you're like just into the, you're into the moment of the fact that Ren just dropped a new song and a new video. And you're just hyped about hearing his, his music and his voice and the way he, he flows, right? And all of his talent, you know what I'm saying? You're just excited to hear and consume it, but you are you don't actually fully grasp how dark a lot of his shit is until you start hearing it again and breaking it down, right? And then you get a better appreciation for it, right? It's like this dude is not just giving you ear candy. You know what I'm saying? He's actually giving you s substance. With God as my witness, I walk through the valley of the shadow of sickness. I fear no evil, I need no forgiveness. Deliver me from temptation, he never listens. I don't I ever seem to feel well. well. Can anybody save me from myself? myself? There's blood on the leaves where yeah, I, I fell. fell. Coming down. Burn the sons and daughters, Lord. This part right here, I never quite understood what it was being said in the background, what I'm about to play in a second. And then I think I watched another reactor's channel, um, and they mentioned it, right? Um, he's basically, it's basically saying, you're Nirvana, could you be the one? And that's it's incredible. But let's hear it, and let's hear the outro, and then I'll break it down.
find my refuge in patience and pills. That was Ren, Lost All Faith. Now, the outro was just um, a part of another... I think it was part of one of his verses. Anyways, it's we've went through that already. Um, but your Nirvana, could you be the one? That's deep too, but I'm not exactly honestly sure what he means by that. Maybe it's like is he talking is he referencing his music as being Nirvana? Is he referencing his fans? Like is his music and his fans the one thing that could finally pull him out of this darkness? Right? Um, or it could just be his music because that's really the biggest thing that's kept him going all this time. So, yeah. Anyway, this this track was just, is just awesome in of itself. And, you know, it does have significant ear candy but it also has significant substance. And it's a lot darker than it sounds <laughs> on a first go. I appreciate each and every one of you for joining me on this reaction review adventure. If you have not yet joined my Royal Court family, you could join my Royal Court family right now. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button down below, ring that notification bell so you can receive all the notifications for all of my videos delivered directly to you. Like and share this video as well. Put a little King Freddy in somebody's life. You know what I'm saying? Make their day just a little bit better. Comment down below what you want to see me react to next outside of the tracks or the remaining tracks of this album review. And if I have not already seen it, I definitely will check it out. Until next time.